Sometimes uh, seasons are referred to as roller coaster rides for Miami. It was one huge swoop up and then uh, a drop in the final three games, of course, from 10 and 0 to 10 and 3. We bring in uh, Isaiah Kim Martinez from Miami Hurricane, the campus site for Miami football, to discuss the Canes and a bright future despite uh, a bitter uh, ending to 2017. Isaiah, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm doing just fine. So I know you're focused on basketball and really liking the prospects of the Canes on the court here. We're going to bring you back to football and uh, have you kind of kind of recount what happened uh, near the end of the season. Uh, the pit uh, performance was was mediocre and uh, forgettable, but uh, they had another chance in the ACC championship game. Not many people gave Miami much a chance in that one, and uh, but they just didn't play well. And then, of course, blowing a 14-3 lead against Wisconsin in the Orange Bowl. Yeah, it's not you don't see too many seasons that kind of went how Miami went. You know, they set so many different records. They beat FSU for the first time in 8 years. They went the Coastal for the first time since joining the ACC, and everything's kind of going in the right direction and suddenly you lose to Pitt, you know, which is a game that, you know, some people were like, "Okay, Miami shouldn't have lost that game." But teams reach bumps in the road. Then Clemson happens, you know, 38 to 3 and you're like, Wow, a huge blowout. You don't know where that kind of, you know, a team where you see Clemson that just dominated Miami in almost every asset of the game, um, pretty much every asset of the game. So you look at that, you're like, okay, so where do we judge Miami now? Was Clemson just that good? Or is Miami maybe not as good as, as you know, the number two ranked team, which was as high as they were ranked um, by like, you know, towards the end of the season. And then going into the Wisconsin game was kind of like that test for Miami. I was talking to people around campus um, basically saying that this is kind of the real test of how Miami's season, what type of team are they by the end of the season? Because Pittsburgh, you could say, all right, maybe that's a fluke game. Clemson, you could say, all right, they're just in another league. But Wisconsin, you could say, all right, they didn't make the Final Four either. They didn't make the playoff. Where does Miami stack up with these upper echelon but second-tier teams, if you will, maybe not the ones that can win a national championship? So Wisconsin, you know, they came out to a big lead early on, or not a big lead, but 14-3. They, they showed some uh, ability to score the ball early. Um, but then as the game went on, you know, you saw what Wisconsin's quarterback did. And Miami, throughout the season, has allowed some big performances to the opposing, opposing quarterback, similar to what Hornibrook did in that game. Um, but Miami played that one close. There were some problems towards the end. The kicker missed a couple of key kicks. Um, Roger made a couple of interceptions, which Mark Rick said were not his fault. They were good reads. It's just some of the plays were just great defensive plays by Wisconsin. So I would say that was a pretty well fought game by Miami and showed that overall, when you look at the season, pretty weird the way you look at it. You know, you win your first 10, you lose your final three. It's like, ah, uh, how can you really call that type of season a success? But at the same time, when you look at that last bowl game against Wisconsin, Miami showed some good signs going into the future. And clearly that quarterback position, I mean, the coaches have said it already, but from that game alone, you can see is pretty much up for grabs going into the next season. So Miami 10-3, and three, kind of ugly the way it happened. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a success, but I would say um, obviously a step in the right direction. And um, next year, I definitely expect more consistency on both ends. Yeah, the way it turned out, uh, you would have to say it's kind of on the border for most Miami fans, the realistic Miami fans who did, weren't thinking after 10-0, and 0, okay, we're winning the national championship, but the ones who thought, hey, this would just be phenomenal if we could somehow continue this run and make it to the Final Four, but thought, okay, we understand that, okay, Pitt, we shouldn't lose to Pitt. We're not going to lose to Pitt if we play them 10 times. That's probably the one out of 10, but it, it shows some maybe immaturity of a team that's not saying, okay, we're right where we need to be and we need to close out this regular season. And then you go to Clemson and of course, even realistic, and I, I would probably put you in this bunch unless you're going to surprise me on this one, Isaiah. You didn't expect to beat Clemson, but you wanted to put in uh, a good effort and show that you could hang with them, that you could play within a couple touchdowns. And, of course, that fell apart quickly, but you didn't have Amon Richards or Christopher Herndon for that game. So that, that definitely hurt uh, being able to, to, to hurt Clemson in the passing game. And then, yeah, Wisconsin was a really good barometer as you sized it up. Here's a team that, like Miami, lost its conference championship game and would be considered in the top five to 12 teams in the country. So there you go. And I think the one surprising thing for me in that game was, yeah, when Miami was playing well and grabbed that lead, the 
brute force of Wisconsin versus the athleticism and speed of Miami, which was the stereotypical matchup, seemed to be coming to fruition. Miami's too fast for this team. They they are just uh, exploding off the ball on both sides of the uh, field, and especially on defense. They just look like uh, they're just beating uh, Wisconsin's offensive line, getting into the backfield, and, and they're just too much for Wisconsin. What surprised me was when Wisconsin came back, yeah, it wasn't with the ground game. It was wide receivers beating what's considered one of the better secondaries in college football. I, I think that was the one aspect of it that uh, was fairly disappointing and surprising to me about Miami's play on that night. Yeah, it was. Um, they were known for their running back, who was one of the best in the country, and offensive line, who also one of the best in the country, and defenses that can make some stops. And when you really look at that game, the quarterback for them played such a bigger role than he had pretty much throughout the season. I believe it was something like 25 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. You know, he played his part, but he really managed the game for that defense to make stops, for that offensive line to give the running back protection. And he had the fourth or fifth most uh, rushing yards the entire season. So when you look at them, they were built off of a run game and they were built off you know, other aspects, not necessarily the quarterback flinging it like crazy. But when you look at that game, running back had a good game. You know, I believe he, he hit 100 yards. But the story of the game was a quarterback getting Alex Hornibrook getting four TDs, no interceptions against that Miami defense. Like you said, that was really like something that you hadn't necessarily seen from Wisconsin. That one uh, freshman, uh, his name escapes me, but he had, I think he had three touchdowns in that game. A wide receiver uh, had a big game. So elements of Wisconsin that you didn't necessarily expect. Um, came to fruition, which kind of, I guess, left a little bit of a bad taste in your mouth Yes, as a, as a Miami fan um, ending that game. 